What's up? This is Joe, and today you're in for quite a treat because today we have two speakers from two awesome companies. The first is a company called Elac, and you may have seen my interview with their speaker designer, Andrew Jones. Now, I can tell you right now that I am an Elac fan. The speakers that I use at home are some Elac UB5s, so I just need to get that out of the way. The speakers I'm going to be looking at today are the Elac Debut 2.0. F 5.2 towers. I'm going to be comparing those to some speakers from a company that is new to me, but not new to audio. The company is called Wharfdale and they were founded in 1932. So they've been in the game for quite a while and I've been seeing their speakers and I've always been curious what they sounded like. Finally, I've gotten my hands on some. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at the Wharfdale Crystal 4.3 towers. Now, just to get straight into it, if you don't have time to watch this entire video, I'll break it down like this. Both speakers are great speakers. They're both awesome values. One of them is not obviously better than the other. I think it's just gonna come down to personal preference as far as sound signatures. The sound signature on the ELAC, like other ELAC speakers and other speakers designed by Andrew Jones, they're more laid back, they're more relaxed, and they're more forgiving for different types of music. They're also more forgiving when it comes to the room. The ELACs are good at sounding good in many different situations. The vocals sound a little bit more enhanced and there's a good center image on those. The Wharfdales are less expensive and I was really Really surprised by them. The sound on the Wharfdales are a little bit flatter on the top end and they also have more bass than the Elax. Overall, if I were to summarize how the Wharfdales sound, they sound a little bit more lively and exciting. Just a little bit more of a fun speaker in my opinion. With regards to looks, I have to give it to the Wharfdales on this one. They really went the extra mile to make sure that these speakers, even though they're not the most expensive speakers in the world, they still look very nice. If you have the front grill off and you see that yellow cone, the tweeter, and that bass driver, it's all very nice looking. And in addition, they've rounded the front and that gives it that extra touch of class. The ELAC is no slouch either. It's just a little bit more of a plain design. Those three bass slash mid bass drivers look pretty beast though, right? Let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's take a look at some of the specs from the manufacturer's websites and let's compare that to some of the measurements that I got using my calibrated mic setup. Now something new that I've been doing is I've been including sound demos where I play a few tracks and I record these speakers using my microphones. Since then, I've had a few people to say that it's useless, this and that. I beg to disagree, even though I did have that position before. And the reason I say that is because I put out some of those recordings without saying which speakers they were, just a blind A-B test. What I wanted to know is if people preferred speaker A, the blue one, or speaker B, the purple one. And I didn't tell them which one was which. I also asked them to describe the differences that they noticed. I was blown away by how accurately they were able to describe the frequency response of these speakers and those differences, even considering that they were coming through the mic and their headphones or their speakers. And as imperfect as that is, I still find that it's useful. And I think that proved my point. I was even surprised that one person was able to pick out how it sounded spatially as far as the stereo and the imaging, because that is what I noticed and that's exactly what I wrote down in my notes when I was listening in person with my own ears. So some of the obvious differences are the drivers that they use and how they arrange them. The ELAC is using three five and a quarter inch drivers here. One thing that I found interesting was even though all three drivers look the same, they're not all doing the same thing. The two drivers on the bottom are acting as the woofers and it seems that the driver above it is acting more like a mid-range slash mid-bass driver. And I noticed this when I was doing some low frequency testing because the two bottom drivers were moving like crazy and the third one was just moving slightly. So that tells me that there's a crossover being used on that one. Interesting. In essence, this is acting not as a two-way design with three woofers acting as the bass driver, but more so that the two bottom ones are at the bass, third driver is the mid-range and the tweeter is for the highs. The ELAC also has three ports in the back as opposed to one port on the back of the Wharfdales. Both speakers are using five-way binding posts. I would say that the binding posts on the Elax are a little bit beefier because it's an all metal construction, but I do have to give it to them on that. They didn't have to spend the extra money to make those, but it is a nice touch. You may be wondering what the price is on these. Right now, the Elax are $299 each on Amazon. The Wharfdale Crystal 4.3s are $199 each on Crutchfield. A pair of towers for $400, that's crazy. I'm just gonna say it right now, if you have $400 and you don't know which speakers to get, if you can fit these towers, just get the Wharfdale 4.3s. 
That's it, hands down. I don't know what else you can get that are gonna be better than these. That's a crazy deal. Right now, if you act fast, they're $199 each. I looked on Amazon and it looks like the price is $498 for both of them. So it's a little bit more on Amazon. Price has changed, so take that as is. Even at $498 on Amazon, they're still $100 less than the Elex. And if you can get them at $400 for a pair, they're 200 bucks less than the Elex. So that's something to keep in mind there. Let's take a listen to these test tracks and see what you think. Make sure you have some good headphones, otherwise you're not gonna be able to hear the difference.
So there you have it. What did you guys think? Which one did you like better? For me personally, I felt like I enjoyed the Wharf Dales a little bit more. The extra bass just brought everything to life. It kind of brought everything together. Even if the highs were equal on both and you were to add more bass to one of the speakers, it just tends to liven up the sounds. And that's what the Wharf Dales did for me. The extra bass made it just sound more full, more lively, and just overall more enjoyable. Regarding the mids and the highs on the Wharf Dales, I like the way that they were voiced. The top end on the Wharf Dales had a flatter frequency response than the Elax, so they were more accurate. Basically, they had that bass that you could feel. The Elax had bass that you could hear, but the Wharfdales had more of that bass, that lower bass that you could actually feel. I typically don't like bright speakers, but these were not overly bright in my opinion. To me, they just sounded detailed, and it really helped with imaging, and it was just a nice sound for me. Male and female vocals sounded good. Like I'm saying, with the treble, it is a little bit more revealing, so if you're using some tracks that are compressed and aren't the best quality, it will expose those flaws. The Wharfdales also seem to have a wider soundstage, so you could hear stuff coming from beyond where the speakers actually were, so a little bit wider than where the speakers themselves actually were. What you sacrifice at sometimes is that the center image is just not as strong, but overall, I prefer the Wharfdales, and from the blind test that I did and the 27 people who voted, 59% preferred the sound of the Wharfdales, over 41% who preferred the sound of the Elax. So going back to the Elax, they do have that stronger center image. That's one of the things that they really have going for them. So if you're planning on using these for a home theater setup and you don't want to buy a center channel, then these would be great because it has that really strong phantom image. For male vocals, the extra mid bass on the Elax kind of brings out that more of that chestiness. Sounds better in certain recordings. They have a very full, solid, overall well-rounded sound. The highs on the Elax are more relaxed relaxed and so they are definitely not fatiguing speakers to listen to. If you're the type that likes to listen to music for long periods of time, you may prefer the Elax. I think the Elax are also good for digital recordings that aren't so good because they are more forgiving. And although they are detailed, they're not going to reveal all the flaws the way that the Wharfdales do. Some people may like that, some people may not. The Elax also did something special when it comes to depth perception. Not only can you hear where something is from left to right, but it also does a good job of presenting something either in front of you or further back. So overall, I would say that the Elax sound very refined. They sound detailed without sounding harsh. They actually have a similar sound signature to some of the more expensive speakers that I've heard where it just sounds effortless sometimes. So although their frequency response chart may not be as flat as the Wharfdales, in a way their speakers sound a little bit more honest. So they're not as lively and some people may think that they sound boring. The way that Andrew Jones set up the sound signature, it makes me really want to turn up these speakers and that's something I had to be careful of when I was doing these tests is to not turn up the Elax louder than the other ones because it gives you that perspective perception that the Elax are turned down because the highs are slightly recessed, it makes you think that they aren't as loud. In actuality, when using the SPL meter, they both were set to equal volumes. Overall, I like both speakers. It's going to be tough. We're going to have to head over to the leaderboard to see where they rank. All right, so here we are. We're back at the leaderboard. And if you haven't seen my video showing the different speakers that I've reviewed previously, make sure to go back and look at that first. Let's see where these rank. So best for desktop, these are tower speakers, so they're probably not going to rank very high on a desktop, just not meant for that situation. So we have the HomePod, the AI40s, some sound bars. I think, yeah, sound bars are probably more appropriate for a desk, unless you have a giant desk. So let's just put it right around here. I don't know, slightly below this, a sound bar because even a sound bar sounds more, more realistic for a desktop use. Not because it sounds better, just because of the form factor. So let's put both the Crystal uh, 4.3s and the Elax equal down here for best for desktop use. So best value, this is a very important category to me because I'm always trying to find the best deal in a certain price range. So the Elac F5.2s come in at $599. I think if they came in at under this $500 price range, they would be at the very top. Because I don't have anything else in the under $1,000 price range, I would still have to put these at near the top. I still think that they're a very good deal. We'll see what else comes in at under a thousand dollars, but for right now, let's put that there. So under five hundred dollars, which the Wharfdale Crystal 4.3s qualify for, even if they come in at four ninety eight or three ninety nine, they're still under five hundred bucks. Uh, the contenders here are the Vanatu T zeros. The Canto U6s, the Canto U4s, and the Apple HomePod. So far, under 500 bucks, these are at the very, very top. Good job, Wharfdale. You guys deserve it. And last but not least, we have Best Overall. So right now, for Best Overall, we have the Fluence AI40s, the Pioneer SP BS22 LRs, and the Fluence Signature Series. Right at the top, they're all competing. And we also have the Vanatu T0s not far behind. So we have these two budget giants. So for a very long time, Elec has been the king at budget. And in this case, these are more expensive than the Wharfdales. 
And as far as how they perform, how they look overall, how do the Elacs compare to the Fluence AI40s and the Pioneers? I'm gonna have to say that they are better overall. Elac 5.2s, how far? Mm, I would say with a decent app, you guys are gonna have to be up here. Elac 5.2 with a top spot. But we still have one more. We have the Wharfdale Crystal 4.3s. Where will this land? In comparison to these the Wharfdale 4.3s overall I'm gonna have to put you above the Elax huge Elac fan sorry Andrew Jones Chris Walker I love you guys but John Durda thank you for sending me the Wharfdale crystal 4.3s these are awesome that's where you guys go you guys deserve it there you have it crystal 4.3s with a top spot all right, so there you have it. The Elac F 5.2s and the Wharfdale Crystal 4.3s. Both awesome speakers, both awesome companies. I would recommend that if you are interested in buying them, I'll leave a link in the description to some places where you can find them. As I've mentioned in my other videos, I do have a podcast that's on my Patreon. I'll leave a link to that if you're interested. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell. You know what to do. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.